I'm, I'm really pleased to be here today, to be invited, so thank you for your interest. And uh, to start my presentation, which is not easy because uh, most has already been said, I will make a summary, not everything I agree with, but I, uh, I think that I can really give a kind of uh, over, overall view on, on the Baltic perspective with a uh, focus on Latvia. Before I start that, I wanted to ask you, uh, what's that? What do you think? It is a Latvian uh, innovation, a startup. Uh, that brought an idea which is now world famous, uh, has uh, export to United States a lot also to the Netherlands uh, in Europe. What do you think? Yeah. It's a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> Catch. <coughs> So the, the, the mic is actually when you, when you throw it and when you catch it, it of course there is, could be like interference of sound. Of course it doesn't happen because it would be uh, difficult then uh, to disturbing these sound sounds. Uh, this is one of um, uh, ways how we can um, actually brand Latvia a very modern, digital, data-driven, Northern European country. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you for helping me to, uh, to explain it. And in my presentation, I will guide you through um, Latvia's, um, a bit also Latvia's history, uh, but allow me to start with um, some uh, misperceptions that uh, people have uh, um, about uh, my country and about Baltic countries in general. May I take it? And before I start, um, I will also um, explain that the Baltic, uh, three Baltic countries are very closely cooperating in the Netherlands. Um, but there is not a Baltic ambassador the same as there is not a Benelux ambassador. I'm Latvia's ambassador to three countries, to the Netherlands, Luxembourg and Belgium, a lot of travel. But uh, um, I see also the like-mindedness of countries in the region. Uh, but we approach, of course, these countries as three different countries. The same applies to the Baltics. Uh, so we, um, we, I think there are fields uh, where we can uh, um, actually work closely together and the Baltic affiliation helps us of pooling our strengths. Um, uh, but uh, in making business, I think we have to be also uh, to some extent uh, honest that in, in many fields we pool and in many fields we also cooperate and we compete. Uh, one of the best pooling examples was his Majesty's visit to three Baltic countries in June. So uh, Dutch uh, King Willem Alexander visited uh, Latvia, uh, Estonia and Lithuania in a week-long visit and I think this helped also for our countries, for Baltic ambassadors to be more visible this year but also for our countries to, to, to show uh, um, kind of our potential and since the Netherlands, um, the, the Dutch King uh, state visit happens uh, every year to limited number of countries, I think that the choice speaks by itself that it was a trip to the Baltic countries and I will explain the reasons why. Um, here to start with I also wanted to uh, introduce the people here in the room uh, who represent Latvia, uh, so that we can, in the questions uh, and answers, also include them. And um, you already were in the acquainted with um, our uh, representative head of uh, the, I would say it easily, trade office, like trade and investment office in Amsterdam, Alice Pika. Uh, we have um, our Latvian diplomat Martin Spundors there. Yes, um, so uh, we are only three diplomats in Latvian embassy, two of them here. So you see the priority of economic pillar in our work. Um, we have among us also our Latvia's honorary consul, Katarina Hartgers, 
um, um, based in Amsterdam, covering the region. And I'm very happy to announce that we have our future honorary consul in this region, Emil Bushinsky, uh, who is uh, in the process of uh, becoming an honorary consul, hopefully within uh, a couple of months. So allow me now to start a, a short journey uh, through Latvia. And as you see here, uh, indeed, uh, we see very close affiliation with the Nordic countries. So here, the, um, the distance between Sweden and Latvia is a bit larger than from The Hague to Eindhoven. Um, and then uh, we have Finland uh, closer to Estonia. Um, and, and we have Denmark, so we, we are uh, feeling uh, in a Nordic uh, European community with a strong Baltic uh, cooperation and with a strong Baltic Nord Nordic cooperation, which expresses in uh, also investment density of Nordic countries in our region. Um, so the capital of Latvia is Riga and uh, um, very often uh, our countries are mixed up, our lab capitals are mixed up and I would like to introduce some more often misconceptions about uh, uh, what Latvia is about. I was accredited three years ago, 2015, and uh, I, I've gas uh, like collected uh, that people feel that Latvia is far away um, we often hear that Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania are post-Soviet uh, republics. Um, I will uh, convince that it is not the case uh, through my presentation. Uh, we heard also that Latvia is the developing country, uh, most uh, dealing with agriculture, that Latvia's industry disappeared after restoration of ind independence in the 90s, and that Russian is the uh, official language of Latvia. Um, I will not answer these misperceptions at the moment, but I will lead you through the presentation and uh, do it through, uh, um, through my, um, how to say, expose about uh, uh, about uh, uh, who we are. <coughs> so um, here, I think you can um, easily feel that uh, we have compared uh, the um, Latvia's and Netherlands uh, uh, facts and figures. Uh, so in terms of population, uh, we never want and like to call our country as a small state because I think we are as small as we pretend to be. But in here, in comparison, of course, uh, there is like uh, almost 2 million uh, population Latvia compared to 17 million. But uh, in terms of quality of our life, look how much more k square kilometers we have per person. Our density is 31 uh, for on the square kilometer for Latvia and 400 more uh, for the Netherlands. So each Latvian has much more space. And this is about uh, what was ex already explained about quality of life, that we have uh, our, our um, uh, land is m covered more than 50% with uh, forests. Um, and our territory is larger uh, compared to the Netherlands. Um, whereas our agriculture land, we consider, of course, uh, agriculture and fisheries to play an important uh, role of, uh, of, of Latvia's uh, GDP growth. Uh, but we are not uh, reaching, the, the, of course, the uh, agricultural land of the Netherlands. Uh, what struck me myself when I ex uh, prepare this presentation, that actually uh, we consider the Netherlands to be very flat. But from this data, you see that uh, Latvia's highest point, 312 meters, which is in Sigulda, uh, and it doesn't prevent us here in winter time to call us Latvia is like Latvian Switzerland. Um, I think it's also a bit explaining our self-confidence. Uh, and uh, I was posted before and I was accurate to Switzerland and um, I brought uh, uh, Latvia's honorary consul to Switzerland, to Latvia. And when I showed him our Olympic center on highest mountain, uh, he was uh, very amused uh, because of our self-confidence, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, I agree that Latvia, uh, Latvian people uh, 
um, uh, do themselves and they engage also those who uh, visit our country in uh, in uh, nature tourism, in uh, winter sports, our winter sports, um, um, I think, uh, pioneers in, uh, in uh, bobsleigh, they are world champions, uh, starting already uh, from, the, um, uh, from the early 90s. Uh, so, of course, nature also matters when we speak about uh, the, uh, the quality of life, uh, not only frost. Our language is uh, um, each of the countries, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, have their national language. Uh, in Latvia it is an old language uh, stemming from Indo-European family, which is close to Lithuania, uh, whereas Estonia's Estonian language is closer to Finnish. Um, so we use many languages, I will explain it uh, in my future slides. Um, I think that uh, uh, Latvia is open country, but also multicultural country in terms of language use. About f 50 to 60 percent of Latvian people or people living in Latvia speak at least three languages. So it is also the phenomena of the country uh, reaching out and being open. Um, I think it is very important also to focus on um, explaining why the Baltic countries are not former Soviets. And here I see my other uh, ambassadors of Estonia uh, and ambassadors of Lithuania on my side because we jointly try to really to explain it because uh, these uh, countries were proclaimed independence uh, of the countries was a uh, proclaimed just 100 years ago. If you see the date, it is the week of 100 years. And um, th this emerged after the First World War. Uh, many other uh, countries were established, just you name Finland, um, also uh, countries like Poland, like uh, uh, Czech Republic, they are celebrating their 100 years. So this was enlightenment time when uh, the countries uh, uh, were searching their self-independence and it happens also in Latvia. So Latvia at that time was um, part of Tsarist Russia when it proclaimed its independence on 18th of November. Uh, it has been a very successful um, time after also uh, becoming a um, member of League of Nations, United Nations currently, uh, also international recognition. So on that year, the Netherlands recognized de jure of Latvia's uh, state. And, uh, and here uh, on 1920 also, uh, there was a Latvian-Soviet peace treaty that also was recognized, Latvian state was recognized by that act by, by, by Soviets. So this was a very successful time when uh, Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania uh, were highly successful, highly prosperous uh, European countries. Uh, Latvia exported to Denmark, to Germany. Latvia's GDP per capita was higher compared to many other Western countries at that time. And this is something that is less known. However, what is known, where we come with this part here as from 1940, that Latvia became part of Soviet uh, Union, but the reason why it actually found itself in Soviet Union was not that it was choice by, by Latvia, but it was a forceful incorporation that followed the Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, secret agreement of 1939 when the um, Europe was separated under zones of influence. So as from this date, uh, which is a very sad date from um, our three Baltic countries, uh, the Soviet occupation started and uh, it continued 50 years. Whereas de jure, so de facto country was occupied, it was incorporated on, in another uh, territory uh, of Soviet Union, but de jure, like legally, the country never ceased to exist and its diplomatic service actually was preserved outside uh, the country. So interestingly, allow me to go back to this previous slide. I think what is legally here needs to be also about legal tradition. Latvia's uh, constitution was established in 2090s, 
1920s, in 1920s, and currently Latvia's constitution is the oldest existing constitution, which again proves that we are not former Soviet, because our like legal basis, our law, uh, comes from this first republic of the country. Of course, it was amended uh, and modernized, uh, but the basis of this constitution is from the basis of the state independence uh, in the uh, interwar time. So um, Latvia, actually the war ended for the rest of European countries uh, 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 at the uh, end of 39, 40, whereas for Latvia uh, we can say that war ended only here when uh, Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania regained its independence uh, and it started through the resistance of the Baltic Way, which is two million people chain uh, connecting three countries, literally uh, holding hands in hands. Uh, at that time there was no Twitter, there was no social media, actually these people came after uh, being called through radio, through the neighbours, uh, the commitment to build a chain of two million people is something that explains itself how urgently these countries uh, were um, tended to become back uh, members of the European family. So this is where we see uh, the Baltic countries' uh, place and this is why uh, the renewal of independence as from the 91 uh, was with such a high motivation uh, where you find actually three criteria fulfilled. The first is popular support. We have in Baltic countries seven million people. Seven million people were behind this idea of uh, regaining uh, independence. Then the second criteria was a strong political commitment what you need to actually re also uh, re-establish the, uh, the uh, reforms of um, economic liberalization, of legal uh, institutional reform, you name it. So these uh, were very important actually preconditions. Um, and the, the political support, uh, the, the elite support and public support, mm -hmm. and of course international support. So here we can really rely also on the partnership that we have with uh, neighboring countries, with countries in Europe that actually enhanced this to happen. Uh, Latvia became uh, EU and NATO member to the, together with the other two Baltic countries in 2004. Uh, as since 2014, Eurozone member. Um, in 2015, Latvia had its EU presidency, 2016, OECD member, uh, three countries, all three are now OECD. So here you see actually reliable European partners on your side. So this uh, explains also the, uh, the, the guarantee of the commitment. Uh, of course, there is also differences uh, that has to be overcome of these 50 years of occupation, but this is the process ongoing. Uh, now, um, let me s briefly um, rush you through the economy. I think why this region is so interesting uh, for uh, business cooperation is because, just one word, it's dynamic. It's happening a lot. Uh, the GDP growth um, for last four years, so it's a sustainable growth, increasing uh, also um, the trend. Uh, and the forecast for next year uh, is 4%. Uh, the Baltic countries have sometimes been called uh, the uh, Baltic Tigers, economic tigers. Why? Because we had to, to get there uh, as from the planning economy to this uh, Western way of economy. In the first years it has been very, very rapid. Uh, but I think currently we are keeping the, uh, like the sustainable dynamic uh, growth uh, um, uh, trend. Uh, the economy is open and it is export oriented. Uh, good services for Latvia is about more than 60%, uh, so which also gives a potential uh, to cooperate with the, uh, these economies. Uh, in, par in particular, I'm speaking here on behalf of Latvia. 
uh, already explained, Latvia is, um, do you see it behind the screen? Yeah. Latvia is, um, is really <coughs> modern, uh, very much uh, uh, open to all IT digital solutions. Uh, we in, in, a, in a national branding, we call it data driven nation. Uh, what is hidden under this is that actually I wanted also to show my, uh, just to convince you that it's true. Uh, here's my card, my ID card with a chip uh, on it. So this is a document where the, each citizen holding Latvian citizenship can uh, sign any document from distance. So it is really e-government in, 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 uh, in, in practice, interacting with government is uh, on electronic online basis. Uh, the IT service is very available and it is because we have high professional staff, uh, um, a lot of um, uh, the, the, like universities also skills uh, are home grown. Uh, I also agree with this point that was made that actually uh, we had to build from scratch and this helped the country to establish so fast. So to, to, to get there, uh, to build there, it was not like to um, to reconstruct, but just really to create. Um, uh, the, uh, for IT service it, in particular, it applies. And uh, in Latvia, we have one of the, uh, s the fastest internets, um, I think fifth fastest in the world. Of always we compete with Estonians, who is best on digital solutions. Availability of Wi-Fi is ac actually everywhere. Um, I can find myself in a wooden house on, uh, um, in forest uh, and have access to, to uh, 4G. So this is a really, the coverage is, uh, uh, is, is um, uh, very much a comparative advantage of our region, uh, speaking about Latvia. Uh, there are um, a, a, a nice gender balance uh, with 43% uh, of uh, Latvian uh, women being in managerial positions and which is one of the highest rates in the EU um, and many of them also being uh, part of PhD uh, engineers scientists um, so topping the uh, the numbers on the EU uh, speaking about uh, what how we deal with the uh, with with actually as a region and with a neighbor bilateral ties, uh, trade is something that we very much understand in our region. Uh, we've been always trading nation uh, because see our location in the middle on the coast of the Baltic Sea and also uh, linking uh, further to the. Uh, through uh, Russia's territory uh, link, linked also uh, to the rest uh, of Central Asia and so on, Asia. Uh, so this location also was the reason why Latvia's history is so complex. So we have had German rule, we have had Swedish rule, we have had Tsarist Russian rule, and you name it. So which reflects also in architecture, which is very rich and wonderful old city where you see all these layers um, and, 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 and uh, trends of the architecture. But speaking about um, current uh, trade, uh, the trade is mainly, uh, well, because of unpredictably um, uh, pattern of uh, trading with Russia, which is of course our natural partner having a, a, a border uh, with Russia and with Belarus for Latvia. Uh, so Latvia has switched mainly to the European markets uh, here uh, with our partners, Estonia, Lithuania, Germany, uh, but also with the Poland, United Kingdom and Netherlands is in top 10 in terms of trade. Um, so it started all um, already from the 13th uh, century when um, the um, historic Hanseatic League was framed and at that time uh, Riga was nicely linked with uh, Hanseatic cities in, in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, uh, this pattern actually is now taken over uh, when Dutch King was in Riga, he spoke about Hanseatic League number two. So we are back there again, 
but now actually f with the foundation of our existing historic ties uh, and, and using new opportunities, also with the um, unfortunate uh, uh, link, uh, no one is happy about Brexit to happen, uh, but I think all countries are, are trying to make out the, 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 the best continuity, how to keep Britain in, but also how to uh, link uh, other patterns uh, uh, in a strong relation and Hanseatic uh, League 2 is here a new buzzword uh, which is used also by our regional uh, cooperation network. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, introduce also this very historic visit. Uh, Dutch state visit took place in Latvia 2006, so 12 years later, King Willem Alexander now being king, uh, before it was um, uh, um, Queen Beatrice who visited Latvia, and uh, he uh, paid a historic visit on the 100 years of the Baltic countries to Riga, Vilnius and Lithuania, and I think the, the, the main essence of this visit was indeed signaling the like-mindedness of our region. Also this historic link uh, on our friendly relations. And here is the quote actually what um, uh, was said by, by, by Dutch King uh, when addressing uh, Latvian people that uh, the Netherlands own culture would be far less rich had it not been for Latvia, our golden age was largely due to our trade with the Baltic countries, so-called mother trade. And on this mother trade, they had provided also uh, food supply, grain for Amsterdam. The Amsterdam could later grow on as a powerful uh, trade superpower. Uh, so um, I think that a uh, good sign is also that this visit signaled that the current stage of the Baltic countries is that we are flourishing in Merlin, France. And, you know, if His Majesty is saying this to you tonight, why should you doubt about it? Um, Currently, Netherlands has um, uh, and Latvia a very good trade turnout. Uh, there are 625 million euros uh, trade uh, to Latvia, seven top importer. Uh, in number 10, top 10 also export partner. And uh, in terms of investment, actually, Netherlands is one of the leading. Uh, here I contradict with the presentation uh, of our lawyers, because according to our knowledge, uh, Netherlands is number two, three um, in the list of uh, investments in Latvia. Uh, so I will introduce briefly also the, the fields where these economic ties develop. Um, if you see the um, landscape of Latvia, first that would come to your mind is that we are exporting timber. True, timber is very important export product, but what is, uh, um, I think, the, has to be noted that uh, uh, there is always sustainable thinking in, uh, in uh, the Latvia, but also Baltic countries making business. Because we are small, uh, we need to think uh, large, we need to think sustainable. Uh, so, which means that our products are added value, not only timber, uh, but it is um, also plywood, it is uh, prefabricated, beautiful timber houses in our market, it is furniture, but it's also uh, the raw materials uh, to be kind of, uh, if there would be po possible interest to invest in Latvia and to develop. So, there are all existing uh, preconditions and know-how. Uh, in this. Uh, the second uh, large branch would be electronics. Uh, I showed already you catchbox mics, but uh, the electronics would mean that we have a lot of startups that we'll explain a bit later. The startup trend is uh, uh, increasing and very much supported by government uh, in terms of um, uh, legal and uh, financial support. Uh, if you have a uh, recently visited the uh, Reichsmuseum in Amsterdam, then possibly you wondered 
how does it come that the glass on the picture doesn't reflect? Because if it would reflect, you would see your own reflection instead of masterpiece. So the fact is that because of Latvia's innovation, this nano cat glass, nano coat glass, sorry, uh, this Gru glass product uh, was established non-reflecting glass. And it is used also for shopping uh, windows so that you really focus on the, on the, on the how to say, on the um, item and not on your reflection. So this is a, a actually mind-blowing innovation that has got a lot of uh, interesting uh, now um, uh, even greenhouses in the Netherlands use it. Um, so nature, nature, nature. Our nature also has inspired uh, Madara Cosmetics that has um, also now um, already uh, expanded to the Netherlands. Natural Cosmetics Ecological Trends, uh, very, very bio, which is uh, pure uh, natural ingredients of our uh, plants and, and herbs. And of course, uh, food products, uh, not only ice cream and oats, but I would also name like ecological, biological food products, which is a niche. Uh, here, innovation has been already briefly um, uh, discussed. I want to come back to my statement that misperception, Riga is far uh, from the Netherlands. If you go and have your trip to Madrid, it's exactly the same distance to Riga. So the country is well connected. There are uh, three um, flight companies, our national flight carrier, uh, Air Baltic with 90 connections from Riga, which means coming from, Air, from Amsterdam by Air Baltic to Riga uh, would open up further to Central Asia, whatever you wish, 90 connections, but also from um, uh, Viz Air flies from Eindhoven uh, and, uh, and Reiner flies from Eindhoven. Uh, many flights per day, so distance is less than two hours. Um, and, um, and also um, large three ports that have uh, um, n here around the Baltic Sea that don't freeze over winter in spite of this ice bear that we, we saw. So the ports are ice free. Uh, so what is inspiring, and I would like to encourage you to uh, really to consider that once becoming a part of this hub that we see our country like regional hub in the uh, European, uh, Northern European region, uh, this would also give a possibility of rail connections uh, with uh, Asia so that our products uh, investors establishing their companies and producing products could deliver them all over the world by sea, by air, by rail. Um, so I just rush through, uh, you've seen it already. This has been um, very much uh, used also in the Netherlands, a nice uh, pedal for musical instruments. Uh, the air drones was something also visited by Dutch King. His economic program was very much around drones and uh, drones that are created in Latvia, both they can be used for windmills. If you have like problems of sustaining your windmills, so send a drone up there um, uh, or firefighting, um, uh, sports, filming, uh, and, uh, and you name it. So the drone is something that our region is uh, very much focusing on and has a very good uh, already experience. And uh, finally, environment of business is that the tax system is very competitive. Uh, recently, OECD has named actually Latvia as a, one of the most uh, attractive um, uh, places where to invest because of, of tax system. Um, it has uh, attractive um, um, environment, so already mentioned here today. In, in numbers, it would mean that World Bank doing business index ranked Latvia number 19, which is a very high, um, uh, actually, credit. 
uh, this, the, those who are interested in startups, so there is both a startup culture, which means this is like generally accepted, but also the startup law and startup financial package with its 100,000 euros, uh, which is distributed to the uh, uh, kind of the promising projects, um, uh, seed money and also establishment money. Um, so, um, yes, so the by a multilingual population, uh, university network, uh, high skill population um, and uh, cost efficient country. I would not call it like low cost, mm -hmm. but cost efficient country. So this is... Uh, everything that I wanted to tell uh, in my presentation but if you have any questions I'm also happy to include my colleagues to be more on focus on the issues that uh, uh, you would be interested to ask. Thank you so much. <laughs>